How's it going my bakers? Hope you're having a lovely day so far. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a seasonal treat for you. Pumpkin spice rolls with cream cheese icing. So let's go to the kitchen and check them out. The last cinnamon roll recipe I posted is pretty much peak cinnamon roll if you ask me. If you've tried that recipe you might even agree. But it is always worth revisiting recipes and trying something new. And it being pumpkin season, I thought why not try and make pumpkin spice rolls. Pumpkin spice after all is awfully popular for some reason, but I had never tried it. In fact the more popular something is, the more I try to distance myself from it. But saying all that, pumpkin spice turned out pretty tasty. It was definitely worth a try. I still don't know why it's so popular though. The spice mix is not the most unique thing about these rolls. The dough actually contains pumpkin and it gives it a nice little flavor in the background. You could even swap it for sweet potato if you like. But before you start adjusting the recipe, let me show you how they're made. Starting with the ingredients. We'll need some white bread flour, water, yeast, salt, an egg yolk, sugar, some softened butter, a pumpkin, or if you want you can swap this for sweet potato if you like, or perhaps even some purple yam. We will use the remaining egg white for glazing the rolls before they go in the oven. It will make them nice and shiny. Okay, moving on to the filling, we'll need some sugar, some softened butter, and all the spices that the pumpkin spice is made of, which are cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, clove, allspice, and a little bit of black pepper. You can adjust the ratios to your taste. And to get a more powerful flavor, you could use whole spices and grind them yourself. Okay, last but not least, the cream cheese icing. For that, we'll need some icing sugar, full fat cream cheese, softened butter, and some vanilla essence or some vanilla paste. When it comes to the equipment, we'll need a baking tray lined with some nonstick paper. I will use a different tray for roasting a pumpkin, just because it's nice and deep and I can cover it more easily, but you can certainly do it on a flat tray. We'll need a bowl for mixing the dough, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a brush, a rolling pin and a spatula for spreading the filling out. If you don't have one of these, don't worry. I'll explain later what to do when you don't have one. Okay, let's start making our rolls. And the first thing we need to do is to bake the pumpkin. Preheat the oven to 190 degrees Celsius or 375 Fahrenheit. Peel and dice the pumpkin. Place it in a baking tray and then cover that tray with some tin foil so the pumpkin doesn't dry out. The amount of pumpkin in the written recipe refers to cooked weight. Increase the raw pumpkin weight by about half, just to be sure that you have enough in the end. Whilst the pumpkin's baking, let's make the scald. This is going to make the rolls extra soft and fluffy. We'll take some of the flour and mix with boiling water, then cover it and leave it to cool down completely. If you are new to scalding, check out my video about it in the principles of baking playlist. Okay, whilst the pumpkin's still baking and the scald is cooling, let's make the filling. First, mix the sugar with the pumpkin spice, then add the butter and mix it all to a paste. If you don't have a little spatula for spreading this out, it'll be pretty difficult. So you should not mix the butter in at this point. Keep the spiced sugar and the butter separate. Then when it comes to filling, use a brush for spreading the softened butter all over the dough and then simply sprinkle the spiced sugar on top of it. In the end, you'll get the same result. Okay, once the filling is made, cover it up and leave it on the side. Next, let's make the cream cheese icing. Combine the vanilla, the cream cheese and the softened butter. Mix it well until it's nice and smooth. Then add the icing sugar and mix again. From this point on, a fork will be the best tool for the job. I don't know why, but it just works better than anything else. Mix the icing until it's completely smooth, then cover it and leave it in the fridge for later. It will set and become harder, but it will soften up again once you take it out of the fridge. You should be able to get all these things done while the pumpkin is baking. It is time to check on it. You want it to be completely soft. This looks pretty good to me. Drop the pumpkin in a bowl and mash it up. The fork will come in handy here as well. If you want it to be extra fine, you could blend it with the food processor or even press it through a sieve after mashing it up. I don't mind having little pieces of fibrous pumpkin in the dough, but whatever you decide to do, leave the pumpkin to cool down completely. My kitchen is around 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty much perfect. So all I had to do is leave the pumpkin and the scald to cool down to this temperature. After mixing the dough and handling it a little bit, the final dough temperature will go up by a couple degrees which happens to be pretty much the perfect desired dough temperature to around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. To learn more about no need bread dough temperature control, check out my video about it in the principles of baking playlist. Okay, to make the dough in a large bowl, combine the scald, the pumpkin, the egg yolk, the sugar, the yeast and the salt and give it all a good mix. Add the butter in there too and mix once more. I know I didn't mention the whisk when I was listing the equipment and that's because it's not essential, but it does help. It is a good tool for no need bread dough making. Okay, once all the ingredients are mixed up nicely, add the final ingredient, the flour. Then grab your dough scraper and mix it to a dough. And if the scraper is not doing the job, you can finish it off by hand. The dough will be a little bit sticky and a little bit loose, but that's totally normal. 
Shape it into a nice round ball and place it into a clean bowl. To prevent the dough from sticking to your hands, you can wet your hands with water. Before we start bulk fermentation, let's check the temperature. And we are right on it. 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the bulk fermentation will take around 2 hours. But halfway through bulk fermentation will give the dough a fold. So let it ferment for 1 hour, then take the dough out of the bowl, place it on the table with the smooth side down, flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, go around in a circle until you reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up again and tighten it against the table. When it comes to recipes like this one, folding replaces kneading. And only one fold is sufficient for a dough like this. After performing the fold, place the dough back into the bowl, cover it up and leave it to ferment for one more hour. Bulk fermentation is over when your dough has doubled in size. Now we can move on to final shaping. Generously dust the table and the dough with flour. Start by flattening it out by hand and then move on to rolling it out with a rolling pin. You want to roll it to a large square. Don't worry too much about measurements here. It doesn't matter too much. But if you do want to measure it, I would say about 30 centimeters or one foot on each side will do. Once you're happy with the size, take the filling and dot it around evenly all over the dough and then spread it out using the spatula. This will take some time, so be patient. And as I explained earlier, if you don't have a spatula, simply brush the dough with softened butter and then sprinkle the spiced sugar all over it. Okay, next we need to roll it up. Fold over a little ledge at the bottom and then keep rolling it gradually. Make it nice and tight and try to do it as straight as possible. If the dough starts getting a little narrow as you move up, simply stretch it out sideways and keep rolling. Okay, now get a chopping board and cut the dough into six equal pieces. A serrated knife will be the best tool for this job. Make sure you cut it in a sawing motion. Don't just press the knife straight down, you need to go back and forth. You could also use the old dental floss trick, where you wrap it around a roll and then pull it tight. I've never tried it myself, but apparently it works really well. I just like using the knife because it's quicker. Okay, once the rolls are cut, place them on a baking tray. And here's a little trick for when you're making individual rolls. To prevent the loose piece of dough from coming undone, and to prevent the filling from leaking out from the bottom, Pull the loose piece of dough off of the roll and fold it underneath it. Alternatively, use a smaller tray and place the rolls side by side. Then you won't need to take this step. But then you also won't get round rolls, they'll be more square. Although it doesn't matter in the end, they'll still taste the same. Okay, one more thing you need to do is to flatten them. And now we can cover them, leave them for the final proof, which will take around an hour and a half. And if your kitchen is cooler, it'll take longer. If it's warmer, it'll take less time. Be sure to preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius fan on and that will be 320 degrees Fahrenheit. During the final proof, the roll should puff up nice and big. When you shake the tray, they should wobble. When you poke the dough with your finger, it should leave an indentation. And these things definitely qualify. There's only one thing left to do before baking, is to brush them with the egg white. Do be gentle here. Okay, let's get these bad boys in the oven. They'll take around 23 to 25 minutes to fully bake. And once they're nicely puffed up and golden brown all over, they're ready. If yours need a little bit more color, just leave them in the oven for longer. These things are looking good to me, so I'll get them out and leave them to cool down. At this point, you could go the extra mile and brush them with the sugar syrup. It'll make them even shinier, more moist and sticky. It's a great option for when you want to keep these for longer. But if you're going to eat them soon after baking, don't bother. Just leave them to cool down, spread the top with icing and tuck in. These things are seriously good. If you have tried my cinnamon roll recipe, you should know what to expect. The texture here is just as soft and light as the other one. The only real difference is the flavor. The super fragrant pumpkin spice and the pumpkin itself. They work really well together. This one is definitely a keeper. So what do you think these pumpkin spice rolls? And have you tried my cinnamon roll recipe? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.